I'm Basim Mora, uh, consultant uh, congenital heart surgeon at uh, Sheikh Khalifa Medical City, uh, Cleveland Clinic in Abu Dhabi, uh, United Arab Emirates. Uh, I uh, gave a talk today about uh, the indications for surgery in adult congenital heart disease patients. If you uh, look at the uh, literature, there are over one million uh, patients with uh, adult congenital heart disease in the United States and uh, Canada with over 20,000 patients each year reaching adulthood who have congenital heart disease. Some of those patients will require uh, reoperations or uh, initial surgeries for their congenital lesions in adulthood. Uh, the most common uh, lesions that we discussed today were uh, atrial septal defects that, uh, in, in patients who are adults. Those are mostly non-secundum atrial septal defects since most secundum atrial septal defects are uh, closed percutaneously. The uh, indications are, of course, anybody that has RV volume overload or uh, other indications for surgery. We also discussed ventricular septal defects, so those that have a QPQS less than, uh, I mean, uh, greater than uh, two, who uh, would uh, are still uh, have lower pulmonary vascular resistance uh, indices. We also discussed the tetralogy of follow and RV outflow tract obstruction and LV outflow tract obstruction lesions. The patients with tetralogy that eventually will require surgery include uh, patients that have pulmonary insufficiency, and those uh, indications for that are symptoms with severe insufficiency or RV dilation, RV dysfunction. RV dilation defined as a, as a RV volume of about 150 cc's per meter squared by uh, cardiac MR. Of course, there are other indications as well. The uh, patients in the, on the left side that uh, require uh, surgery for LV outflow tract obstruction include patients with subaortic stenosis and typically those uh, we looked at a peak gradient of about 50 millimeters of mercury or a mean gradient of 30 across the LV outflow tract. Uh, what we do is resect their membrane in the subaortic region with a limited myotomy. Patients with supravalvar aortic stenosis are not very common in adulthood but those that do present in adulthood uh, require surgery if their LV outflow tract gradient is a, is a peak of 70 or a mean of 50 according to the uh, ACC AHA guidelines uh, that were published in 2008 as a consensus uh, statement. The, there are also patients with Epstein's anomaly that will require surgery and a lot of those will present in adulthood with either symptoms of fatigue or dyspnea, sometimes arrhythmias or uh, RV dysfunction and uh, those will also require surgery uh, with Epstein's repair, typically the cone repair uh, for Epstein's anomaly. And uh, a lot of the patients, of course, with uh, in adult congenital heart disease will, will have uh, congenital operations in adulthood for valve-related valve uh, procedures. And those, we usually use the same uh, guidelines for the AHA ACC guidelines for valve-related disease or for aortic disease, because a lot of those patients can also have aortic pathology as they develop into adulthood. And finally, the single ventricle patients will require uh, surgery in, in adulthood. But those are not very common, but uh, whatever uh, patients present with, uh, oftentimes those are patients that will require surgery, aside from heart transplantation. I did not discuss uh, patients that, that develop acquired uh, adult uh, heart disease in the setting of congenital heart lesions. So uh, in, in, in uh, most uh, centers, those adult congenital heart disease patients are done uh, have their care at uh, specialized centers for adult congenital heart disease and their surgery should also be done usually at, uh, at centers that specialize in those procedures. The meeting is, has multiple disciplines within cardiology and heart disease and uh, I'm sort of a minority because I'm a surgeon in, the, in a cardiology meeting but it's, uh, it's still a good meeting to exchange uh, research ideas, exchange, exchange points of views and uh, see how uh, other centers and other uh, uh, physicians and researchers approach topics of interest to the cardiology and heart community. And have you been approached at all by fellows? I know this, that's, that seems to be a very big thing at this Congress is the fact that fellows get the opportunity to present their work, uh, which is of course in its infancy, to more seasoned people in the, in the cardiology field. What benefits do you see on both sides from, from having these young people uh, attend the meeting? Well, I mean, I think this is a great meeting for them to start uh, putting their, uh, their uh, stamp on their field and in terms of their research and, and gives them an opportunity to present at a meeting with, uh, with experts in the audience, uh, with uh, a lot of people that can, they can interact with, even get some research ideas. 
and 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 develop their careers in in academia. Thank you very much. Thank you.